Hey guys, how's it going? So I'm back with another video on the ROG Ally. This time I want to go over some of the tips and tricks. There's a lot that I'm going to cover, so I'm just really going to speed through this. Feel free to pause, rewind, etc. to make sure you get everything. All right, so let's just get right into it. So the first thing I would say is, you see how quickly that fingerprint worked? Make sure you set that up. And if you had set that up when you just got your ROG Ally, there has been some firmware updates. Just re-register the fingerprint sensor or if you were really, really excited to get yours and you kind of skip through that in the um, initial Windows login, then just set that up again. The easiest way to get there is just to search, type Windows hello, and then, and then, tap, and then tap sign in options, fingerprint recognition. So just for the sake of this, I'll just set it up from scratch. Yeah, and then tr just try different angles. And from there, you're not gonna have any issues logging into Windows. So if I just try to put my computer to sleep, I keep calling this a computer because I mean, it actually is. So what happens when you touch the power button, the fingerprint is red and it's pre-cached. So if it's done correctly, it should take you right to your home screen with just one touch of the button. So spend some time doing that. It'll make it easier and faster to get into your ally. All right, and the next tip is just kind of the nature of dealing with a Windows device in general, especially something from ROG. There's just a lot of different updates to do, and there's a lot of different places to get your updates. So one of the first places to go to is Windows Update. So you just press the Start button and then type Windows Update, and then click on Check for Windows Update. Updates. And you see, as I can, as you can see, I have two here, but they they were failing. So I just hit retry now, and then just so just make sure you run through all of those, update all of those, and then also go to Armory Crate and make sure Armory Crate is up to date. Another tip: there's a dedicated Armory Crate button, so just tap that. Then Content, then Update Center, and then just make sure you're up to date by clicking Up to Date. Third is in the My Asus app. It's kind of a pain. Asus separates their apps between Armory Crate and the My Asus app, but there's important day one updates that are only available in the My Asus app. I would advise a little bit of caution with the My Asus updates. Um, just go on Reddit or wherever you typically go on to get to get your news to make sure that they're not breaking anything. There's a lot of times where Asus will come out with a new um, firmware or BIOS update that could cause issues. And from what I've been seeing online, that seems to be the case. So just be careful with it. I would say if if you just get your if you just get your ally on day one, um definitely run all the my ASUS updates. But then after that, advise with caution. Just make sure you know what you're getting into. So this BIOS upgrade, I've been I've been hearing that it's been causing some issues. I don't know if it's this particular um, version, but I'm not gonna take the chance right now on camera until I look into it a little bit more. So that's kind of generally the case, not just for Asus laptops or handhelds, just all of them in general. They've been known to cause issues. So unless you're having a specific issue, except for the day one updates. So now that you're fully up to date, you're ready to start using this device any way that you would like. And one thing you may notice is my taskbar is automatically hiding. If you saw my unboxing video, you've seen that that was one of the first things I did. And that is one of the first things I do whenever I get a Windows tablet. So to change that, you just hold down the taskbar, hit taskbar settings, and then at the bottom, there's taskbar behaviors. Tap on that, click automatically hide taskbar. I do feel with a device like this, especially since the screen is small, every little bit of screen real estate is important. So another thing you'd wanna do is make sure that your system power and battery settings are what you want them to be. So hold the little battery icon to the right and then hit power and sleep settings. And then from here, you would want to change your settings based off of the type of performance you want. If you're looking for better battery life, you'll change your power mode between balanced and more power efficient. I found myself being plugged in a lot, so I've been leaving mine on best performance. And battery saver, if you've noticed this, sometimes when you're playing a game and you go down to 20%, that battery saver kicks in and it just tanks your gameplay and you could lose progress with that. So one thing to do is just to probably bring that down to never. All right, so next, and I did cover this in my unboxing, go to the AMD app. It's called AMD Software. Click on Settings. 
it looks like Radeon Super Resolution is on by default. I don't remember that being the case when I did my unboxing video, but you know what? It's fine. It, it essentially just upscales games to run at the native resolution. If you feel like things are looking a little bit pixelated or just not very sharp, you can take this off. You know, in fact, I'm going to take this off. I don't typically keep it on, and with FSR, which I'll cover later on, you don't really need this. Radeon Anti-Lag, I keep that on to help reduce latency, and one thing about this ally is the overall input latency is insanely low, lower than anything else I've seen out there, and I'm, it's been really a joy to game on. And on the display, you want to make sure that AMD FreeSync is on. That's going to ensure that the screen refreshes at the same time as the frame is generated, so it helps prevent screen tearing, it can help decrease latency, and it overall provides a smoother experience and very bright, which I mentioned in my unboxing, take that off. That hurts the display quality of your screen. AMD and Intel, when I, next time I do an Intel-based laptop, I'll show how to disable their version of that. But this essentially decreases the contrast and the overall brightness to save battery power. So honestly, it's up to you. If you want to squeeze out most of the battery, then turn this on. And then there's different settings to determine whatever the sweet spot is for you. But no, I want my displays to look as pristine as possible. So I keep that off. One of the main reasons why the Ally sounds so good is because of the processing done by Dolby. So I cover a lot of laptops and I found that Dolby has the best processing of sound out there. So it could take mediocre speakers and make it sound really good. So it looks like there's an update that's that, that I need to do. So make sure your Dolby is up to date. For the sake of time, I'm not going to do that. And there's different profiles um, for game, movie, music. So usually music at the balance setting is the most accurate neutral sound but if you want to pump everything up and make everything sound like for lack of a better term dynamic click on dynamic which it seems like that's what i've kept it on and you can also go to game which is actually important and you can put on you can put on performance mode and performance mode prioritizes positional accuracy for competitive gaming. I have found that Dolby does a really, really good job creating stereo separation the best it can considering that there's just tiny, tiny speakers in the ROG Ally. And then also there's different custom settings. So I do have some friends who spend a lot of time in here and they come up with their own custom profiles to get the sound exactly the way they want. One thing I will say though is if you have good headphones, like these Focal Allegias here. And by the way, I'm gonna leave links to this in the description. These are on clearance right now. They're gonna go away forever. When these came out, they were like $800, $900. And now you could get them for $400 on both um, Amazon and Adorama. I got mine from Adorama. So I'm gonna leave some links in the description. For $400, this is better than any gaming headset, any regular headphone for listening. I mean, it's, so it's a traditional, it's a traditional headphone though. So the only way to use it is by plugging in this antiquated headphone jack. But honestly, for gaming, it's still the best way to go. So anyway, rant over. When you plug in headphones, what I like to do is since these headphones sound so good on their own, oh, and then, so, so then with that, you're able to get Dolby Atmos for headphones. But unfortunately, especially with these headphones, they sound incredible on their own and I don't want any kind of processing going on. So when I turn on headphones, I have to remember to go in to disable all speaker and headphone effects. Only when I'm using headphones, but for speakers, but for the actual speakers, I do keep it on. It's kind of a bummer. I wish there was a way to just turn it off for headphones, but keep it on for speakers. But I have to remember to go in and change this around. I mean, there's a good chance that you could, that you might like the way the Dolby sounds with your headphones. So that's just something to keep in mind. I'm hoping I'm covering some stuff that all the reviewers haven't. So if I've been able to help you out anyway, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button. But anyway, so this is the command center. And another thing that you may not know is you can actually add more boxes to the command center. So you just press the armory crate button. Then under settings, you can edit the command center and you can, you can add or take away stuff that you don't use. So right now I can just go ahead and add. As you can see, there's other stuff that you can add, which is very useful. So you can customize this command center the way you'd like it to. And another thing that I've gotten a few questions on is how do you change the lighting? So in the settings, you just hit lighting. As you can see, I set my brightness to the lowest. I find as cool as it looks, I find, I find the RGB to be a little bit distracting for me. 
So I just don't, I just, I just take it off. And even more importantly, I don't know if you've noticed, but at nighttime, th these lights shine really, really bright. So if it's in your room and you're trying to sleep, it's, it's incredibly annoying. So you can go ahead and take all of these off. Before I figured out the setting, I was literally unplugging it before I went to sleep, which sucks because the standby battery isn't the greatest. I'm just gonna take off all the RGB for now and then as I need them, I'll start turning them on. But as of right now, I just feel like they're a little bit intrusive for me. So here's another tip. This, but th this right paddle button is actually a macro button. So if you hold this and press different buttons, you'll get different commands. So right bumper and up brings up the keyboard. Same thing again, brings it down. Right paddle left brings your desktop. And then you can press that again to bring it back up. So then right paddle down, that brings up your task manager. You know, unfortunately with the way Windows is, sometimes your games freeze. So you want to be able to go in there and just and then force end tasks. Asus has a video of what each of them do. So that's just something to be aware of. And then, so let's go back to the Armory Create really quickly. There's actually a game launcher here. So whenever you do download a new game, just pull down to refresh and it shows your games. You could be on any screen of your ally. So you just hit the armory create button and then go to your game library and you're in. So that's a really, really nice little feature. Before I get into a game and show some in-game features that I like to turn on, just learn the windows gestures. You can, you can use three fingers to go into your multitasking. I mean, I also show that there's a macro to do that too. And then three fingers down brings you to your home screen. A lot of people don't know this, but you can actually create di different desktops in Windows, very similar to how you can in a Mac. If you want to switch from one desktop to another, four fingers, and then just drag. And then same thing. And then another thing coming back to this, just being more than just a gaming device, is you have the full access of the Windows Store. And I know people like to make fun of this, but like there's a lot of apps here. You got your Netflix, your Disney Plus, Spotify, um, Amazon Prime. On MacBooks, they don't even have apps for this. If you want to look at Netflix, you got to go to Netflix.com. I don't know if that's changed, but when I was using a Mac, that's, that was the case. There's TikTok if you're into that, Adobe Lightroom. Oh yeah, and another thing, claim your Xbox Live Ultimate, which I did not do. So you get three months and it, and it adds on to your existing plan. So I'm going to get three months before it starts charging my Discover card again. I mean, there's Discord here. Zoom, Facebook Messenger, which I do have friends that I message only on Facebook Messenger, Twitter, like, so the thing is, this is a fully featured machine. Like, I feel like the Steam Deck is only a gaming machine. I feel the Nintendo Switch is also only a gaming machine. This, for $600, you're getting pretty much everything at your fingertips. All right, guys, so when it comes to gaming, there's only two settings that I want to talk about. The first one is... V-Sync, take that off. V-Sync is only necessary if your GPU does not support AMD FreeSync or, or NVIDIA's G-Sync. This doesn't have an NVIDIA chip in it, so FreeSync is the only one that's applicable. And we already turned on FreeSync in the AMD software, so you, could, you, want, so you would want to take Vertical Sync off. Fidelity FX Super Resolution, we just call it FSR for short, you'd want to put this on in every single game that supports it. What this essentially does is it runs the game at a lower resolution and then using AI, machine learning, etc., it upscales it to make it look better. And there's different settings and each of them have a really big difference in terms of performance. There's quality, balanced, performance, ultra performance, and in some cases there's an ultra quality mode, which it doesn't seem like Resident Evil supports. I've been... For, for Resident Evil, I've been using performance. I find because the screen is a little bit smaller, I'm able to get a really nice picture out of performance while getting reasonable frame rates. All right, guys, and the last tip might sound actually really silly, but enjoy using this. There's a lot of settings, and with PC gaming, there's so many things you could go down a rabbit hole with, and when it comes to analyzing your, um, your your performance metrics like and looking at your temperatures and staring at your frames etc stop doing that. <laughs> honestly don't do that I know I know it's like it's our innate desire to want to tinker with things and 
tweak things and get the absolute most we can out of it, but I would advise take all that off. At one point, everything was 30 FPS, and we all had some of the best gaming experiences at that frame rate and at much lower resolution. So once you're playing a good game, you'll get sucked in regardless of the settings. So just, so I guess that's my last tip. Just, just game, have fun.